You really don't know yourself until you've been tested. You just, it's, it's not until that moment of extreme pressure that there your character is revealed. You don't know if you're courageous or cowardly until there's a real danger of losing something very valuable and important to you like your money or your happy-go-lucky life that you enjoy right now. It's, it's only in that testing, and, and it could be even small challenges, they give a little glimpse of what, what's really inside of you. It's something as simple as, you know, do I raise my hand in class? I know the answer, but what if I don't, you know, and everyone's going to laugh. Do I, do I ask her out? Oh, man, she's so out of my league. What am I thinking, you know? I'm going to go for it. Do I have that really hard conversation with my spouse? Or do I just let it slide another day? Yeah. See, you just, you don't know if you've got courage or cowardliness in you until it's tested. Oh, there's a whole lot you don't know about you and... You don't know how selfish you are until you get married, you know? And then your, your pettiness, your smallness, your pickiness, your demandingness, it all comes out, you know? If it, if it weren't for this relationship, this testing closeness called matrimony, well, you'd go through life thinking you're a very normal, upstanding human being. You know, it, you don't know how tightly held your money is in your hands until you're asked to give it away. You know, a dear relative comes to you, and through no fault of their own, they're really in a hard way, and they need $5,000 from you to help pay for their health insurance. And you know their kids, you know they got health problems. You have the money. You don't know how tightly ingrained your self-esteem and your, your identity, your self-worth is with your job intertwined with it until you don't have one. See, when life is good, and you're healthy, and, you know, your family's all getting along for once, and, and hey, the kids are happy, you know, and, uh, well, the, the work is meaningful and weekends are restful, you have no idea what's really in you. It's only in the challenge. And so it is in the Christian life. You really don't know what your faith is. And you don't know if you're, if you're just trusting in the, the blessings of God, His good gifts like home, family, health, wealth, or are you trusting in the gift giver, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? But take the gifts away, when the gifts are gone, then you'll know. So God tested Abraham. Abraham, yes, take your son, your only son, you know, the one you love. Y yeah, take him to the mountain I will tell you about and sacrifice him as a whole burnt offering. This is the child long waited for, the promised one, who then would be the next step into the stars and the seashore of having that many descendants. This is the one whom Abraham loves. How, how could Abraham, just as a human being, cut the wood for that sacrifice? What was in him that he could go three days on a journey and not just be a a big debate with God. Are you sure? What were you thinking? You know, no, he just, without question. How could he so calmly answer his beloved son's question, Dad, we've got fire in the wood. Where's the sacrifice? The Lord will provide. Abraham, in each step along the way, remains unshaken. Even Jesus was tested to see what was really in him. as he is baptized in the Jordan River, 
as he's coming out. The Holy Spirit then leads him into the wilderness. For 40 days he doesn't eat. He's by himself. He's at a very low point, and there Satan comes to tempt him and to test him, to see what's there. And in all the tests that Jesus would face, they really have but one goal in mind, and that is to sidestep the suffering and death that will happen at the cross. What will he do? And in all of the tests, of course, Jesus remains unshaken. Perhaps you know people that are just unflappable, you know, no matter what happens to them. They, they just, they can face anything. You know, oh, uh, lose their job that they have for 20 years. Whatever. You know, oh, uh, facing cancer. Okay. Uh, even the death of their spouse. They just remain this, this unshaken mass of a rock. You know, and maybe even you are that person in your family. Everyone else just losing their mind, you know, but not you. No, you, you're, you're going to hold it together for everyone, you know. And, but surely you've heard of fool's gold, right? You know what fool's gold is. It's, it's the mineral pyrite, and it looks like the real thing, but of course, in value, it's, it's actually very worthless compared to real gold. Well, there, there is... There is a type of unshaken faith that looks like the real thing, but it's actually worthless compared to unshaken faith. And, and this, this look-alike is actually a very common possession held by those folks who maybe come from a more of a European background, more of a stoic kind of a crowd, more of a conservative Lutheran kind of crowd. This, this kind of, kind of look-alike unshaken faith... Um, doesn't allow you to really ever get too happy without the thought thinking, well, you know, things will change. You know, you, you can't get too excited or too low. You got to keep, got to kind of keep even, you know, hold it together, you know, and, and, and the highs and lows, no, no. And so you, you, you have to kind of keep people too at a, at a bit of a distance. Don't let them see what's really going on inside of you because Wow, you know, that, that wouldn't be any good. So you've got to keep people, you know, you can be polite. You, you can be friendly, sure, but, but they can't see what's, what's really going on in here with all the, the big emotions. If there's going to be tears, oh, no. If there's going to be, you know, big wailing and lamenting or just, no, the only, the only emotion that they can really see on a daily basis is anger, okay? Everything else, off limits, all right? unshaken, right? Unflappable, right here. It's fool's gold. It's not the real thing. And, and, and there, yeah, okay, the reason that it's, it's fool's gold is that nobody sees you. Nobody knows what's really inside of you. It, it, it's simply inside of a heart it, there's still this, this desperate, stubborn uh, self-reliance. It's all about you having power over you and your world. Oh, yeah, I may not be able to control what's happening. I may not be able to control the crazy people that are losing their minds, but you know what? I can control my response to it, and I can just shut it down. Unshakable. Again, nobody knows you. Nobody sees you. Not the real you. And, and you could even fool yourself into thinking, no, that, that is unshakable faith. But it isn't. It's, it's you taking care of, of you. And, if, and sometimes you can be really good at it and you think it's, it's what you should be. This is what strength is. But the real gold, the real unshaken faith, well, there are no walls of protection dampening and keeping away all the highs and lows of the emotions. There's no walls keeping people out. There's no mantra saying, you know, man up, be strong, you can do this. You know what it is? It's a person. Here's what I mean. You know, all the challenges of life. Yeah, it really reveals what's inside of you, but it also reveals 
who is inside of you. See, for a Christian, that's you and me, right? Oh, for a Christian, when the gifts of God are gone or absent for a time, you know what remains? The gift giver. And with the gift giver's presence, real unshaken faith, pours out the heart of lament. There are tears, there are emotions, there's highs and there are lows. Real unshaken faith prays something like this in the depths. Jesus, I don't know how or if I'm going to make it. I really need whatever that is that's now absent. And there's grief and there are tears and other people are invited in to see it your friends, your family, your spouse to really care for you. Now the reason that we know this is unshaken faith is because that's what we saw in Jesus. See, he knows this prayer. He prayed it himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Remember? When he's there and he's struggling, there, there were great tears, great emotions as he cries out to God his Father again and again and again. And he wasn't alone. He had his friends there. They, they saw him undone. They saw him. They heard him. They, they were able to write it down, what, what was going on. And, and as they saw Jesus praying out to his Father that this cup of suffering might pass, Father, I don't know if I'm going to make it. They also saw a soul that was completely abandoned in that test. As Jesus hangs on the cross, his test was to be completely and utterly forsaken of God. He receives within himself the sinner's judgment, our judgment, but the reason that he does that is so that you and I will never go through a challenge or a test in this life by ourselves. For he has been the one to be abandoned. He is the one then to step out of it victoriously in his resurrection. And he says, I am with you and I will never leave or forsake you. And I don't know if you've ever put it all together then. And to really see what's going on. If Jesus did not abandon you when when the test was at its ultimate height. I mean, he sweat blood, right? Right? there in the garden. And, and, and as the nails and as he's, he's suffering everything for us, he could have just stepped away from it all. He could have called down a legion of angels. Even one could have done the job. He, he could have just walked away from you and humanity in his greatest ta- challenge and test. But he didn't. No, he remained. And so if he remained there, then He will not abandon or leave you in your tests. The gift giver is always with you. And this is a really key piece of information on having your own unshakable faith. Because it's not about being like Abraham. You know, he he bucked up, you know. He he manned up and he did what God told him to do. And, And see, he has an unshakable faith. It's not about being like Jesus. You know, well, he just faced everything and he succeeded. Because you and I, we fail again and again and again. So what do you do when you, when you fail the test? Well, don't be too alarmed because even Abraham continually failed the tests, right? I and mean, we got a lot of examples of Abraham going, oh, that was not good. See, when you fail the test, don't be too upset because guess what? In life, there's another one coming. And then there's another one coming. That's the way life is. It's one after the other. And then when you realize in each one of these tests, as you fail or have some success, as you fail, that that Jesus, he's always with you. And then you begin to see where the unshaken part comes from. It's not in the success. Where, Where God is refining your faith is in the test itself, in living in it and through it. It's when Abraham is sawing the wood. It's in the three-day journey to Mount Moriah. It's in binding up his son. It's in taking the knife. It's not in the success. It's in the test itself that God is refining that you might have an unshaken faith. So you and I, when we find ourselves in, in 
challenges and tests. We're like, ah, this is terrible. God, get me out of it. When actually this is the very thing that God is using to make you into the kind of person who will rely on him when you don't have a job. To trust in him when your health is uncertain. To, to know that he is with you even in the darkest depths, knowing that if he didn't walk away with you then, he's not walking away from you now. He is your, he is your love that will not dwindle. He is your rock that will always be your foundation. See, he's the one who's unshaken. He is the one who makes you unshaken. This faith is not something to be grasped for. It's one to be received. And it's here for you. Amen. We stand then and we speak the words of this faith that we have received. We confess to one another, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.